In the late 80s and early 90s, America went through a period of linguistic reform often called political correctness. Now, that's a term that goes back to the Russian Revolution, if I'm not mistaken, and at the time it was mostly used derisively, so I'm hesitant to apply the label to it here. But suffice to say that our culture started to consciously shift towards more inclusive linguistic conventions around then. Or at least the better part of our culture did. Like every attempt at social reform, this one had its opponents. And like every other attempt at social reform, it had overzealous adherents that armed the detractors with infinitely mockable things like you know, like the term vertically challenged and the fight against the prejudice against left-handed people contained in the term right-hand man. Now, now to be clear, that, that's not a legitimate criticism of political correctness, right? If I gorge myself on ice cream and get sick, that's not an argument against eating. And as the husband of a four and a half foot tall left handed chick, I can confirm that our society needed to be reminded about those people's plights, even if the term vertically challenged still strikes us as silly. But legitimate or not, these types of things were used against political correctness. And I think it's fair to argue that the backlash to that movement is a lot of what fueled the rise of right wing talk radio and eventually Fox News. Conservative white people were being asked to make ever so slight changes to their vocabulary for the sake of someone other than themselves. And anybody who's tried to get those assholes to wear a mask during a pandemic knows how well they tend to do it, sacrificing for the sake of others. Of course, the backlash against political correctness wasn't limited to the political right. As loath as the lefties are to claim him, Bill Maher is definitely not a Republican and his show Politically Incorrect debuted in 1993. Right. And, and this represented a different type of backlash. There was certainly overlap, but the backlash on the left wasn't ideological. It wasn't the racist dog whistle bullshit that Rush Limbaugh was pumping into the world, but it was still pretty fucking toxic. The message behind it was, I feel like we've been coddling these minorities long enough. Right. I think we've given up enough for them. Uh, one of the ways that this backlash manifested itself, and here I slowly work my way around to the point, is through the rise of shock comics which before its modern refinement was just Andrew Dice Clay, you know, working the word pussy into nursery rhymes. And sure, depending on how you wanted to find shock humor, there were some people that did it really well, but there were also a lot of other people. And not all of them were clever enough to realize that Hickory Dickory Doc also rhymed with some chick was sucking my cock. So we fast forward to the late 90s, early 2000s, and you got a universe crammed full of would-be comedians and radio DJs and eventually fucking would-be internet personalities as well, all vying to shock an increasingly hard to shock public, a public that's seen it all. And look, the laziest way to do that is just to think of something that you can't imagine somebody saying in public and then saying that in public. So, you know, these folks are all going after the obvious targets, the things that are most guaranteed to get a rise out of people. So they say racist shit and they say sexist shit and they say anti-religious shit. Now, at the same time, there's also this nascent new atheist movement, and it's driven to the forefront of social discourse on yeah, September 12th or so of 2001, when the country really started reckoning with the dangers of religious extremism for what seemed like the first time. So in this instance, the shock comics or, you know, whatever the next level down from shock comic is, wound up being the proverbial broken clock, getting it right twice a day. They were poking fun of religion because, you know, they thought it would make people gasp, not because religion was bad, but it was bad. And people who were pointing that out ended up overlapping with the shock comics. The atheist movement fed them. And everybody who's ever been on the Internet knows what happens when you feed the trolls. Now. In our defense, we didn't know they were fucking trolls, right? And when we figured that out, we basically jettisoned them. But, but to get there, we had to have this weird reckoning where we woke up and realized we were in bed with a bunch of sexist, homophobic, transphobic, racist assholes, right? And presumably, I guess they had the moment where they woke up and realized they were in bed with a bunch of us, right? We, we were travelers whose destinations shared the same road for a few miles. So for a while, we thought we were all part of the same caravan. That's an easy mistake to make. And when we got to the fork where our paths diverged, we were, you know, pretty happy to see them off because they were a bunch of assholes to begin with. And we were only suffering their company because we don't get to pick who's on our road. But that's not everybody's experience, right? Because a lot of people jumped on board this caravan while those two groups were walking together. They don't know the difference between them and us. They, they weren't here before the shock comics showed up. So when what they saw was a movement they joined splitting up. They saw a schism where there was none, and, and they thought the whole caravan was going to break apart. You know, those of us who went to the conventions and the meetups and the clubs and shit, we weren't surprised by any of this. 
that wing of atheism, you know, the, the troll wing, they only showed up online when there were religious people to piss off. They weren't interested in community building or legal fights or, you know, anything like that. They, 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 they were interested in, in pissing on other people's sensibilities. Uh, what was the means for us was the goal for them. So by the time we were getting started, they were already done. Now, they're not here anymore. Right now, I'm, I'm not saying there are no trolls in the atheist movement, nor that there are no misogynists, homophobes, transphobes, xenophobes, etc. I'm saying the shit posting trolls have moved on because the rest of us have normalized the criticism of religion, at least enough that it's no longer low hanging fruit for them. In fact, nowadays, those same people are just as likely to talk shit about atheists as they are about Christians or Muslims. They have realized some people are passionate about that, which makes it perfect bait for them. Right. So my point here isn't that atheists are unenlightened people or that the atheist movement purged itself from all its bigoted influences. I'm just saying that when we realized how bad we were, we tried to get better and we continue to try. And there is no downside to that.